Hello lovely people, in today's video I'm going to talk to you about something that I'm going to be trying out over the next couple of months. Now you might have heard of it, it's called ketones. Now ketones are a cycling nutrition supplement that's been used by professional cyclists and professional athletes since about 2016. But don't worry if you don't know what it is because in this video I'm going to run you through the pros, the cons, what the f*** are ketones and more importantly the scientific research behind this product. Before we dive in though let me just clarify that I am not a nutrition expert, this is not professional medical advice, this is just a video based on my opinions on the data and research that I've done. I'm just a curious cyclist looking to see what happens when I integrate ketones into my current training and racing and working life <laughs> routine um, and I will be sharing my personal experience over the coming months. So if you're considering trying ketones yourself I would recommend you doing your own research and consulting with a medical professional but that being said if you want to see the research that I've used to create this video I'll leave everything in the description down below. So let's get into the video. So what exactly are ketones? Ketones are molecules that your body naturally creates when you break down fat to use as fuel when you don't take in enough carbs. This is called ketosis. But ketone esters, just like ketone IQ, are exogenous. And what that means is that they're made outside of the body. Ketone IQ allows you to add ketones into your body and into your system without the need for cutting carbs or changing your diet in any way. Having both carbs and ketones as potential fuel sources means that you could enhance your cycling performance and recovery. Top athletes and the US military have been using ketones to optimize their performance for a while now and now it's available for the public to try out and experiment with which I think is really cool. Numerous world tour teams are using ketones. The likes of Dakota Quickstep and Jumbo Visma have acknowledged their use of ketones within their cycling nutrition strategy. But because not all cycling teams agree with the use of ketones, sometimes it's unclear who's using them, how they're using them, and how that all integrates into the many aspects that they're considering when they take on some of the toughest bike races in the world. It is essential to keep in mind through this this whole video that ketones are not going to be a magic solution for everyone. The evidence after all is still evolving. But that's what makes this experiment that I'm going to embark on quite exciting because I'm going to find out in my own experience how ketones work for a normal cyclist like me. I want to see if I can find those marginal gains in my own training and racing alongside a busy working life of running my own business. We know that pro athletes use ketones, but how do they work for an everyday person? Firstly, let's talk about some of the potential drawbacks for using ketones if you are a normal person. First of all is the price. Ketones are very expensive to make and therefore they're expensive to buy. For many amateur cyclists, they may not be able to afford the amount of ketones required to see a benefit. And then also they may not be doing enough training as well to see a benefit from the use of ketones. But this is something that I want to look into more and I'm looking forward to sharing my findings on that with you. You can literally buy performance in cycling. So for a normal everyday person, they might benefit more from spending their money on a cycling coach or upgrading their set of wheels. But hey, who doesn't love marginal gains? The second of all is the taste. And when I say the taste, it is not good. It's not a pleasant taste. These things are what I would call strong. And I don't mean that in a positive way. When you first try them, it's quite unpleasant. It's kind of like a nail polishy kind of taste. That being said, I've been taking them a while and trying it out and the taste has got more palatable, but I wouldn't say it's pleasant. 
But that being said, these could make you faster. So uh, <laughs> no pain, no gain, I guess. So moving on to the science part of this video, let's dive into the research. What does science say so far about the potential benefits of ketones for cycling performance and for recovery? It's fair to say when I was looking into the research on ketones, the effects are intriguing but somewhat mixed and there's definitely more research needed. The first study on ketones back in 2016 showed that well-trained cyclists improve their performance in a 30-minute time trial after taking a ketone ester mixed with carbohydrates. However, other studies since with different exercise regimes and different protocols show a decrease in high intensity efforts or they show no significant change in performance from using ketones. So as you can see, on the handful of studies we do have, there is a mix of how ketones actually affect performance. According to a more recent study published in the Journal of Physiology, researchers found some compelling evidence for improved cycling performance and recovery. So what they did is during a three week intensive cycling program, participants were divided into two groups a non-ketone group and a group that took a ketone ester supplement after working out and before going to bed. And guess what? Those who drank the ketone ester experienced a 15% increase in their endurance compared to those who didn't have the supplement. However, there is a bit of a twist when it comes to this particular study because the benefits of ketones may depend on your training load. For example, this particular program and research paper pushed the participants to the brink of overtraining. An exhaustive training regimen with endurance sessions, high intensity interval training, and sprints. Participants trained twice a day, six days a week, for three weeks. This is not the typical amount of training that a normal cyclist would do, but the reason they designed this test is to somewhat replicate the demands of a three-week grand tour. The subjects within this study who received the ketone ester supplements found that they noticed a lack of physiological symptoms typically associated with overtraining. Their resting heart rate remained more consistent and they had decreased level of a stress hormone GDF15. The reduction of this hormone meant that they were able to maintain calorie intake and get better sleep, whereas the non-ketone group started to enter a calorie deficit and didn't recover as well in week three of the testing. So when participants were at that last week of testing where they were really at the point of overtraining is when the biggest benefits were seen through using ketones. There is also some really interesting research on the combination of ketones with sodium bicarbonate from the same researcher, Peter Hespel. His research team's main concern with ketones was that they increased blood pH because ketones are slightly acidic. And what that meant is that this could lead to reduced maximal power. Not great for cyclists who are trying to create huge numbers at key sections in the race or at the final of a big race. Peter's team hypothesized that ketones in combination with sodium bicarbonate could mitigate the increase in blood pH and therefore have a great benefit to cycling performance. In this test, Peter and his team had nine well-trained cyclists ride for three hours at sub-maximal intermittent pace, followed by a 15-minute time trial, and then finished off by a one-minute, 175% of lactate threshold sprint. The idea with this testing protocol to be to reflect the demands of a day's racing for a pro cyclist. The nine cyclists undertook this lab test four times in four different conditions. So the first was after a 65 gram ketone Easter. The second was after consuming 300 milligrams per kilogram of body weight of sodium bicarb. Then the third time the ketone and the sodium bicarb doses combined. And then the final one as a placebo placebo drink. For each of the four rides, they took the supplements before and during the ride, plus they consumed 60 grams of carbs per hour. 
When it came to power output, bicarbonate alone and ketones alone did not improve anything, but the combination of the ketones and the bicarbonate resulted in power output improvements of between 10 and 30 watts in the time trial across the board. That's very significant and equates to around a 5% increase in their performance. Even if that doesn't translate as a 5% increase in the world-class cyclists, there's still an improvement gain probably to be found. And let's be honest, these guys and girls at the end of the day are looking for the smallest margins and those could be the difference between winning and losing. It's also worth mentioning too that pro cycling teams are constantly doing data, testing, experimentation when it comes to all manner of things to increase their performance. So I don't really truly believe that cycling teams would be using ketones unless they had found benefit to using them. Ketones are also mentioned as a potential factor for why pro cycling keeps getting faster and faster. So just some food for thought there. So that's my overview of all things ketones and you can see why I'm interested to try out and experiment with them for myself. So what I'm planning to do over the next few months is to implement Ketone IQ into my training regime, do my own experimentation, record my data and to share all of those findings with you. So I have no idea what we'll find but it should be an interesting process. So let me know if you have any questions around this and as always be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out what I find from all this experimentation. Thanks so much for watching, keep risking it for a biscuit and as always i'll see you in the next video love ya did you get the shot